morning, booktube! This is Nikki with Curiosity Quills Press, and today I am wrapping up the four novels I was reading in preparation for today's tweet chat, hashtag she said he said, the female perspective. And this is about four debut female authors penning male protagonists with like an undead theme that we are publishing or have published in the last couple of months. The first two books, as you may remember, were Catch Me When I Fall by Vicki Lee and The Other Lamb by Katie Young. This week, I read The Undead Playing for Keeps by Elsie Elmore and Gateway Through Which It Came by Heather Marie. So, I told you last week that I really don't read male protagonists very often, but when I do, it's usually the classics that I love, such as Harry Potter or The Hobbit. I have completely changed my mind about male perspective and male protagonists because I heart them now. Um, these books over the last two weeks have completely changed my mind about YA male protagonists. Um, a lot of times when I've read them I don't relate to them and let me tell you I have related to the characters in these books sometimes even better than female characters that I have read recently. Let's get started talking about the books. The first book I read was Gateway Through Which It Came. Now this book has been out since August 25th and I've been really excited to read it but I wasn't sure with the male perspective if I was going to like it, etc, etc. Um, started reading this, finished it in two days easily. It starts with Aiden Ortiz who is a 17 year old boy and he is a gateway which means that he helps people cross over to the other side by walking through him physically. His body becomes the gateway to the other world, uh, which I thought was a super, super unique idea. And it kind of gives background to the fact that this kind of just was thrown at him when he was 10 years old, a dead person found him, and, you know, he had to deal with that. And it's very um, draining to go through that kind of thing. And so I, I really appreciated that she showed the difficulties of it as a 10-year-old boy and also still kind of the... Um, feelings that he has as he's getting older with who he is and what he is. He's not only dealing with that 17 kind of age where you're like, I don't know where I'm going with life, you know, who am I, blah, blah, blah. But he also has to deal with his gateway identity and what that means for him for the future and if he has a regular future as a normal, normal person. Um, there is a love story. It's so, so touching to me. Um, and I think that his insecurities with this girl who is his best friend and he has been crushing over for forever really touched my soul because who hasn't kind of been crushing over a friend and secretly, you know, really wanted to date them and just not been able to, to tell them because you don't want to break the relationship. I think that's such a common trope um, and everyone can relate to it. So I really, really like that that was in there, but it wasn't overdone or, you know, kind of too typical basically. And the ending, I won't spoil for you, but the ending was great because it, it was enough of a cliffhanger where I was like, oh yeah, there's a sequel and I need to read it. But it wasn't such a cliffhanger that I was like, well, what the F happened? You know, um, so I loved it. I Two thumbs up. I'm so excited to ask Heather questions this afternoon about what she was thinking during this process. Um, but I have one more book to talk about. So the next book is The Undead Playing for Keeps by Elsie Elmore. And I read this one on my Kindle. And I have to say, a uh, quick note, I do think that when you're in a time crunch to finish reading books, um, I got really busy and I had to read this book like really quickly. And like I read it in a day and a half. Um, and I feel like when I'm reading a paperback and I'm in a time crunch, I, I read faster because I'm like, oh man, I still have this much to go. Whereas on my Kindle, I was kind of like, oh, okay, like 20% is good, right? It's all be done soon. Um, but I sped through this, and I think I probably would have read it just about as fast, even if I didn't have to, because it was so interesting. Um, the whole bringing people back to life is not a new concept whatsoever, but the way Elsie does this is great. Basically, you have two POVs. You have Leela and you have Eric, and it starts out with Eric. Uh, no, it starts out with Leela, just kidding. Um, and Leela is this kind of shy, demure... Uh, almost goody two-shoes kind of person. She gets good grades. She wants her parents to be happy with her. Um, and her parents run a mortuary and a funeral home. So there's that. And then Eric is the Reaper's assistant, if you will. He goes and finds the people that he's supposed to, that are supposed to die soon, and marks them by touching them with his hands. And that means it signals death that this is a person and he can find him when the time comes. Um, so he can't touch anyone with his hands. He has to wear gloves. He comes to town because all of a sudden people that are dead don't stay dead. And 
you find out that Leela actually has a lot more to do with this than you would think and she is terrified of course but it's it's partly her dealing with these things that are happening and, and people that are dead in her family's funeral home coming back to life but it's also her kind of coming out of her bubble and standing up for herself and I really liked that there were two separate journeys the paranormal situation that is a story in itself but then um, Elsie really talks about the character's growth for Leela and in her kind of dealing with herself and finding her voice um, and, you know, still being her but becoming a stronger version of her. Um, so we really liked how Elsie developed her characters um, with so many different faucets to them. Again, that I could really relate to. High school is kind of rough all the way around for people um, and you're just at that age. Uh, and I think that she really, really captured everything that you go through in that time and in those insecurities and self-identity kind of moments um, while interweaving this really great undead theme into it. So another big thumbs up for me. Um, I am super pumped, guys, because we are about two hours out from the tweet chat. I really hope you'll all join. It's hashtag she said, he said, and we're going to be there with all four ladies, and I have a little surprise. Besides some fabulous prizes, we are going to have several other authors from CQ that are females penning males, just not with an undead theme, that are going to be there participating, and you are, of course, welcome to ask them questions as well. They are going to be talking with the authors about their experiences and kind of just sharing the perspective overall. So I really hope you're going to come. It's going to be a blast, and there's going to be, like I said, some pretty badass prizes, so please participate. I guess my cat's helping out today. This is Smog. Say hello. Smog is going to be... He almost bit me. Smog is going to be at the tweet chat with us today, so you should be as well. Hashtag she said, he said, and I'll see you there.